Good day to you all. I am the Mouse Master with the start of a new Semazg series. Semazg as in Semi-Spoiler Introduction, Manual, and Strategy Guide. The early videos are intended for anyone brand new to this game, and the later ones for intermediate players looking for some tips and tricks. Think of this series as something that Splattercat Gaming would do, but going into even more depth and strategy, with the only trade-off being that you have to deal with a far less interesting host. Or, if you're a total pro at the game, you probably won't find anything new for yourself here, but feel free to watch anyway, and perhaps critique the heck out of me in the comments. I need the algorithm help. So, what is Thea the Awakening? Well, for starters, while I've heard it said both ways, I think it's actually pronounced Thea, as reported to me by my volunteer fact-checker for this series, King Valorian. Say hello, KV. You can find him on the Muha Discord server, which I will link in the video description. So, Thea. From a development standpoint, it is the first game released by studio Muha Games. A small studio that, as of this video, seems to be six people, with some video game pedigree, and occasionally questionable choices when posing for cameras. Muha has released two games since Thea, one being a direct sequel, Thea 2 The Shattering, and the more recent re-release? Remaster? Reimagination? Uh, of the classic game, Master of Magic, which puts Muha squarely in the programming niche of hex grid, turn-based strategy and tactics games. I mean, for now. I guess they could always make a multiplayer kart racing game in the future. From a lore standpoint, Thea is set squarely in high fantasy Slavic folklore. Certainly not as popular a setting as Greek and Norse gods. So for those of you whose ancient fantasy knowledge is limited to debating whether the best lightning god was Zeus or Chris Hemsworth, I'll give you the overview of how Thea lore works. From the standpoint of the gods themselves, it is a lot like Greek or Norse mythology, a pantheistic folklore with individual gods having domain over different aspects of existence, and each god seeming to bounce between mostly mortal to reality warping seemingly as the plot demands. But where the folklore goes a bit different to the more Mediterranean mainstream media is how they treat the other magical entities that exist within the world. If you've ever heard a fairy table where fairy tale where there was some trickster doing something naughty, though not necessarily malevolent to a person, then you'll have a good idea on just how about every demon in Thea operates. Unlike modern religions, where the word demon tends to mean an agent of evil, in this game the word demon just means a magical creature that serves some very specific niche existence. Like a Skishak, or house demon, that is, basically, think Dobby from Harry Potter or the Herlic that can fill in for the mischievous sprite in any story ever, or the Baba Yaga, which is basically the big bad witch from Hansel and Gretel, usually. The only real thing tying all the types of demon together is that they, again usually, are all bound by their words, along with all the be careful of the exact language used stipulations therein. A demon breaks its word, it's going to have problems. And if you know exactly the demon you are dealing with, you might use that to your advantage. But having said all that, the big takeaway is that demons aren't really anything special. Sure, some of them are powerful, and some aren't. Some are benign, some are evil, and some are entirely cool. So don't judge the demon book by its cover. Judge it by how many rows of teeth it has. Also, Thea being high fantasy, a smattering of the classic fantasy races are present. Elves, orcs, and dwarves can all be found out there, and if you are lucky, recruited to your cause. You, however, start as a settlement of humans. Oh, and also apparently everyone in Thea is sarcastic as heck. Might be part of why I like it so much. You've been warned. So that's the setting, how about the gameplay? Thea has two main layers to it. The top layer is very civilization-like. A hex-based world grid, with your settlement starting right in the center, and various tasks like resource gathering, building and equipment crafting, and interacting with in-world events all being the primary part of the main gameplay loop. The second layer is the event resolution, i.e. the combat. 
It's a bit of a misnomer, as there are also eight different skill-based challenges that often have little to do with physical violence, but they are all resolved the same way, and it just makes it easier to lump them all under one name. The aesthetics of the combat resemble a collectible card game, but once you see it fully in action, roughly four videos from now, you'll see it actually plays out much more like an old-school JRPG. It just looks like a card game. And the overall game style is that of a rogue light. Each game is self-contained, with you starting out with a single settlement and a goal of finding out what happened to your world to plunge it into darkness. Permadeath is entirely possible if you aren't careful, or luck just totally screws you. However, at the end of every playthrough, win or lose, you will earn experience towards the god you chose to follow, causing your next run to give you some additional benefits. I'll go over that more next video. And lastly, just so that no one has any false hopes, let me say three things that this series isn't. After all, I would just hate to end up getting a lot of views from people accidentally. One, it is not going to include a list of in-game events. I may mention a few specific ones, but this game has hundreds of events. Some fixed, some that will happen but randomly timed, and others that may never happen or happen multiple times. All events have a number of ways they can be resolved, with most resolutions all having a random factor on if they work or not, and potentially random sets of rewards. A video series on Thea's events would be a hundred hours by itself, and after having just spent that long on an Ultimate General Civil War series, I'm planning on something slightly shorter. Two, this is not a munchkin guide. While Thea veterans may find a few tidbits of new info in here, it isn't designed to give you instructions on how to beat the game on maximum difficulty, sometimes called a 350% run. I'm just here to help you out on normal, clearing godly is up to you. And three, I will not be doing a full playthrough during the series. I will certainly be doing some playing, as that is the best way to demonstrate how the game works, but this is only a semi-spoiler guide. Actually experiencing everything, beating the game, and... Uh, saving? Thea will be up to you. And that is the introduction. See you next video as I go through the various aspects of starting your Thea journey.